This tool saved our company a hundred thousand dollars. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC, and I'm here with my boy Stuart. Hey. Oh, so check this out. You know what this is? This is a big old chunk of Inconel 718. And check out the color. It's not only Inconel, but it's extremely hard Inconel. So it's gone through different processes to make something that's already hard even harder. And when all the machining is done, on this beast of a piece, this part will be up in space. But how do you actually machine something that is so hard that it just breaks cutters, right? We're gonna talk about that. Oh! Yeah. And before we get started, I just wanna invite you to hit the subscribe button and check it out. We just hit 100,000 subscribers, so we wanna thank all of you out there for allowing this all to happen, all right? so. At the end of the video, if you like it, please hit the like button. If you want us to teach on something, you just want to communicate with us, go ahead and put it in the comments, and we are really good about getting back to you, all right? So, oh, yeah. ink now. Boom. Oh, nasty right? material. We've been doing a lot of tutorials, like how to machine ink and 625. And we're always using the Harvey 3 end mill, and you know, just being real, some people throw it on us and it's like, oh, can of metal's paying you to use that end mill, and uh, it's simply not true. So I figured I'd just grab Stuart, we'd get on here, and we would actually speak exactly to that and tell you why we use this end mill and only this end mill for cutting hard materials, all right? So when we first took on this specific job, Stuart, yeah. were we using the Harvey 3? No. We're using a competitor's brand. Yeah. When we would be running this machine, we would have our end mill in there. It would come in, we'd have it touched off, it would go into the material. 18, 15, 19 minutes later, it would snap. We would have to be right at the machine. We couldn't go through and run other machines because we'd have to watch this one for when the tool broke. Then, once the tool finally broke, we'd have to mark down the exact line of code go through, take our tool out, replace it, fix anything that was damaged, put a new tool in, retouch it off, program restart to that exact line, proof it back in, get back into the cut, start cutting, and it would just break again. And you're talking big three quarter inch end mills, right? So these guys are actually like two to 400, sometimes more dollars per end mill, right? Cause they're long, they got crazy reach, and they're expensive tools. Very expensive. Right? So 18 minutes, right? Think about that. If this thing's gonna rough for 20 hours straight, how many end mills are you gonna break? And how much money is that just in carbide? That's crazy. And we had a lot of these things to do. This is a job that went on for months and months and months. Huge problems right out of the gate. We tried some other different end mills. Yeah, we went through competitor after competitor after competitor. No tool could solve our problem. All right, so let me break the story down just a little bit more. So we have an awesome video out about Kenna Metal and where we actually went over to La Trobe and actually did a whole piece on the company and it was amazing. Well, just days before that, I personally had programmed this job I put the speeds and feeds, the chip load, all of it, exactly in the sweet spot that I actually knew about from experience. Stuart had ran the aluminum part, the yep. setup, and everything was yep. fine. I had to fly out to Pennsylvania, so he took the reins, yep. actually started cutting into this piece, and within 18 minutes of getting my program in this piece, he had a broken end mill. This job is a crazy job. The material is crazy expensive. The end mills are crazy expensive. I don't want to have that phone call where I call my boss and I tell him, hey, we're going to go through three, four thousand dollars of tools just on the first part. Yeah, that's not a call <laughs> that I want to get either, right? So now I'm in Pennsylvania and I'm actually like reprogramming it. I send him the numbers. We back off on the surface foot and the chip load. 
give it to Stuart, <laughs> and what happens? I throw in a new end mill, type in the numbers, and the first cut, we get 30 minutes life. 30 minutes. And let me just say, 30 minutes is not a good thing. I'm expecting at least 90 minutes in cut. So I made a few calls. We actually used a few different tools. Yeah. We're talking to some of the best technical guys in the entire country. They're giving us exact speeds and feeds, and the end mills are breaking. No matter what we try, the end mills are breaking, and it's stacking up. The longest that we could get was an hour. I think at one point we got almost about 90 minutes, right? Yeah, yeah one but, time we were able to get it. But we're just breaking end mills. So this is when I actually go and talk to Danny Davis over at Canamel. And I'm over there and I'm talking to him about the problem. And then all of a sudden, he shows me this bad boy right here. I had no idea, but I looked at it. This is the Harvey 3 right here. And I was like, oh, that's a beautiful cutter. It's got six flutes. But the other ones also look good, yeah. right? But then Danny started like talking to me about this tool. And he's like, Titan. That's not just a tool, that's the Harvey 3. Like, this is the one that won the Boeing Challenge. I'm like, what do you mean, Boeing Challenge? And then he's like, Titan, Boeing had a competition amongst all end mill providers to win a contract to be the end mill, which machined a huge amount of Boeing's titanium. So they all came together to win that contract, knowing that whoever won it would be able to have bragging rights and say, this is literally the best end mill in the world for titanium, says Boeing, right? Not says us, says Boeing. And I was like, that is awesome. So I started looking, I'm like, what about Inkino? He's like, absolutely. I'm like, what about A286? What about Monel? What about Hasoy? He's like, absolutely. It is a beast in all those materials. So he gave me some speeds and feeds. We actually moved our surface foot, right? So we actually went down. We're probably about 130 on the surface yeah. foot, right? You know, so we're not like cranking. And we're hanging down long. And we wanted to put some pressure on this guy. So I called Stuart. I gave him all the parameters. We overnighted the tools to Stuart. This tool lasted seven hours. Ah! So seven the, hours. Seven hours. This tool went seven hours non-stop in Horton Inconel. And I want to say something that's very important here, all right? So you see that there's broken teeth on this end mill, right? But through experience and understanding how much material we left on the part for our finish pass, we would watch this tool as the tip broke, as little chunks came out of it, as it died. But I was just like, just keep it running until it actually breaks. And you know what happened? It would run for another two to three hours with chips in it. We named it the zombie mill. The zombie mill. <laughs> it dies and it just keeps eating Inco nonstop. It looks like it's all haggard. This tool, seven hours in Inconel. One tool takes the place of seven tools, 10 tools, right? Know how much money I'm saving right there? And then it runs for months and months and months. And then we use it for all applications after that, which allows us to actually bid lower get jobs that we probably wouldn't have gotten otherwise because we didn't have so much cost in tooling. And then ever since then, this tool has been the standard in our shop. We have run titanium over and over and over again, Inconel over and over again. This tool is our number one pick. And standards are important when you're actually competing in this industry. You want a tool that you can use in a wide range of applications and it's your go-to. So here's a plug for Canametal because they did something genius. They have a program called First Choice. And that is a program where they basically dissected 60,000 SKU numbers, right? And they actually came up with the absolute best tools for our industry to be a standard in shops all over the world and that is huge because if it's a first choice tool, 
they keep a massive amount of stock, right? So you don't run out of these tools. So if I need five tools and I need it here tomorrow, I can just call Canon Metal or a distributor. I can order that tool and it will ship the same day. Again, solving huge problems. So let me be very specific about something. All end mills are not created equal. You gotta make sure that if you step up to big jobs, that you step up to the right tooling, that you truly talk to the applications people who actually design that tool. You start with their speeds, their feeds, understanding that it's probably gonna be on the conservative side. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you push it. You keep the data, you keep putting down, what is the chip load? What is the surface foot? How many minutes in cut? What type of cut? Keep that data and bank it so when you quote your next job, you know exactly how much it costs you to actually rough that material. The zombie mill. The zombie mill. Oh. All right, Stuart, now that we've talked about the Harvey 3, AKA the zombie cutter, how can people actually learn how to use this tool, right? How do yeah. they find the speeds and feeds for their applications? We go to Novo, which is a can of metal application that you can get on your computer. And Novo has a database of all the right speeds, feeds, stepovers, and everything that you would need to get the right cut for the right job. So basically you just pop in like your application, what the material is, it'll throw up all different tools that are good for that application, whether you're mm -hmm. milling or drilling. Yeah, right? drills, inserts, chamfer tools, taps, anything. Then you just select what tool and it starts calculating all the speeds oh, and yeah. feeds and then you can just make adjustments and that's a good starting point. Yeah, and then once you have that data, then you come to our channel and you can watch how we do special tips and tricks on how to do the right path and how to navigate the world of cutting. Absolutely, Stuart, that's yeah. awesome. So let me, let me say, if you don't know how to actually machine ink and L, if you wanna just gain some experience or see how other people machine ink and L, there's a great video right on the front page of our YouTube channel. And that video is called Masterclass, How to Machine Ink and L 625. This is a really cool video because we actually go through the entire process of machining an actual part. I truly speak to the art of machining ink and nail and the approach and why we hold things, why we pre-drill things. So drilling, thread milling, mm -hmm. all of it. It's an amazing video with a wealth of knowledge. And then if you want some knowledge and entertainment, then go check out Machining Titans Titanium Line where we take a big old piece of 604B titanium 200 pounds, rock it in the five axis, and machine a lion, and we put all the speeds, all the feeds, all the specifications to teach you advanced techniques while putting on a show. All right, so you guys have a great day. My boy Stuart killing it, making it happen every yeah. day. We will see you on the next vlog. We're out. Boom.